Inside this edition of the Sunday Law News Report, we'll focus on one of Christ's most fearful predictions. Jesus said in Mark 13, 9 that we will be beaten in church for our faith. Beaten in church? Beaten by whom and when? Christians are paying a huge price because of their loyalty to Jesus Christ and their love for Him. They may be abandoned by others, but not by God. My father in this world left me, but my father in heaven will never leave me. I love my parents so much. I want them to know that I'm praying that the Lord will open their hearts and minds. I would like to send a message to my dad. You say you want to kill me, to shed my blood in public. No matter what decision you make, I forgive you. There are two ways when the government finds out someone is a Christian. There is execution. And number two, when a Christian gives up their religion, they are sent to the countryside to political concentration camps. If they found me praying or encouraging my friends in Christ, they will take me and put me in prison. They try to force us to deny our faith and beat us when we refuse. The mob threatened us, saying that India belongs to Hindus. Christians do not belong here. They make slogan, Christians have to move from this village, otherwise we will kill. They warned us that if we rebuilt the churches, they would kill us. They would break our body into pieces, just like they broke our church into pieces. Many have come to me and said that they went to a church and were told not to come. That makes my heart sad. I can't see how we are second-class believers. Just because some inherited their faith from their parents and others searched for God and found Him. Many Christians have abandoned us. They could have helped us, but they didn't. These people are supposed to stand with us and have a part in solving our problems. First, the Christians were pushing us to go to the church and be at the meetings. But after I went to jail, they said, please don't come to the church again to avoid us having problems. We are asking the Lord to give us more boldness, to give us the strength to bear His name and to stand strong in the face of terrible persecution. They cannot burn Christ and the church from our hearts. We are in God's hands. I have the Holy Spirit inside me and He gives me the strength not to be afraid. It was really hard, but praise God, God took every fear. No one backslide, no one left Christ. They became very strong believers. My faith was never shaken. I know that in all situations, God is with me. Whenever the persecution comes in your life, do not be discouraged. Just go and ask strength from God, and God will save you. God will guide you in every difficulty. In every difficult situation, keep strong faith in God. I will always trust God, who gives me another new life. Always God with me everywhere. God has strengthened me. He has made me bold. I cannot stop. I must continue this because I was chosen by God for this world. Here's the exact quote of Christ found in Mark 39, 12 and 13. Jesus said, But take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils, and in the synagogues you shall be beaten, and you shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. He says, now the brother shall betray the brother to death, and the father the son, and children shall rise up against their parents, and shall cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Imagine being betrayed by your own family member. Oh friend, imagine that your very own mom and dad will sell you out to the authorities just because you refuse to keep Sunday as a sacred day. Imagine that your very own brother and sister, whom you love so dearly, 
He'll deliver you up to the authorities simply because you're a Sabbath keeper. I believe Christ. Do you? If Jesus said this will come to pass, then I believe him. We begin today with the 2014 World Watch List, a ranking of the 50 countries in which the persecution of Christians for religious reasons is most severe. And according to the report, the amount of Christians killed because of their faith doubled in 2013. The report is released every year by Open Doors, a non-denominational Christian group that supports persecuted Christians around the world. According to the list, the five worst countries to practice the religion are as follows. North Korea takes the number one spot for the 12th year in a row. The report cites no numbers on the amount of people killed. However, it says that Christians there faced, quote, the highest imaginable pressure with between 50 to 70,000 living in political prison camps. The next ranked country is Somalia, where Open Doors reports that this year 10 Christians were targeted and killed by members of the militant group Al-Shabaab. The third most dangerous place for Christians is Syria, a country plagued by an ongoing civil war. Open Doors says that in 2013 there were 1,213 martyr killings in the country. That's more than half of all martyr killings the organization documented worldwide. Number four is Iraq, where Christians are increasingly threatened and attacked by Islamic terrorist groups. A local source says has told Open Doors that one Christian is killed every two to three days there. And in fifth place is Afghanistan. Open Doors says the influx of Islamic extremism and tribal pressure have made practicing Christianity unsafe. Some lawmakers have publicly said that converts to Christianity should die. In addition, the increase of persecutions of Christians around the world tells me that persecution specifically aimed against Sabbath keepers is not far off. But to me, the most awful part of Christ's statement is that saints will be beaten inside their own churches. Can you imagine Brother Jones and Sister Smith, with whom you enjoy weekly potluck, torn on you when the crunch time comes? The Lord predicts that even the very church members of our congregations will betray us. Here's how the spirit of prophecy paints the picture. She says, when he leaves the sanctuary, darkness covers the inhabitants of the earth. In that fearful time, the righteous must live in the sight of an holy God without an intercessor. The restraint which has been upon the wicked is removed, and Satan has entire control of the finally impenitent. God's long suffering has ended. The world has rejected his mercy, despised his love, and trampled upon his law. The wicked have passed the boundary of their probation. The Spirit of God, persistently resisted, has been at last withdrawn. Unsheltered by divine grace, they have no protection from the wicked one. Satan will then plunge the inhabitants of the earth into one great final time of trouble. As the angels of God cease to hold and check the fierce winds of human passion, all the elements of strife will be let loose. The whole world will be involved in ruin more terrible than that which came upon Jerusalem of old. See the great controversy, page 614. Saint of God, I truly pray that you will look around you and observe the signs of the times. The events leading up to our persecution in this society is almost upon us. The Bible tells us, and I quote, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. First Thessalonians 5.3 May God help us to get ready for that awful time of trouble. And always remember that God loves you. Yes, He really, really does love you.